the breadboard or whatever need to be protected. Yeah, that flyback so is hard to get up. around. When you're pulsing <laughs> a coil, I've popped enough you capacitors. <laughs> is your adjustable power supply working that we saw in the video? Yes, yes, it is working. The like workbench power the, supply. Just get the ten dollars circuit. You're fine. You can use your phone as the uh, generator. So uh, I did uh, earlier because um, I just got um, the uh, the adapter to do so, but uh, uh, for my laptop to input a tone. So yeah. right now I was only limited to the phone and the stereo, but I have the adapter for the laptop, and I was just trying to whip up a, a circuit, but I couldn't get it uh, running with the tone generator. So I don't know if I'm adding the it's tone generator no and the battery correctly. You're looking at high, low, you got to get the tone is on a very low. Mm. Your, your voltage is on a high. So it's a high low circuit. So you have to run your voltage through this circuit that adds the frequency to it. That's, it's like I said, it's a ten dollar device. Oh, so the battery has to be running, and then you the, mean a high um, pass filter and a low pass filter? Yeah, it, it basically adds okay. your frequency to. So I can't just your, put your them voltage. both on the the. What I just is just put them both on the the rail on the breadboard. If you want to pass <laughs> the high frequency to your coil without the low frequency, so yeah, it didn't work. But uh, you can do that with a uh, um, capacitor. Okay. Oh, there In we go. Series. There's one. Yeah, so when uh, when you can uh, tune it in properly on the low end range, I'm assuming that's somewhere around 7 or 10 hertz. It also depends, oh. I, I guess, on the, the size of the sphere. I think mine is a little bit too big for my coil. Wow. I got a smaller a one. I might be able to do that. Yeah, that's a neodymium magnet in there. Oh, I like how it looks is like an eye. Right. So what they're doing it's is just putting in a, a low end frequency. Like uh for me it's like seven, seven hertz. hertz. And yeah. yeah. It's very stable. All right. It's nice well, how it stabilizes it. We it uh, is, it's just, yeah, it's it's pretty remarkable. I mean it's 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 mimicking a a, a a black hole really or or a plasmoid if you or will. a magnetic bearing it's like a magnetic bearing yeah What's yeah all, all the same geometry around what is the and, coils wrapped uh that, oh, that kind of frame geopolymer yeah <laughs> uh, what's uh epoxy resin mix or something mm -hmm. and that i have to emphasize that kind of coil frame is not um like it looks good and it lasts, you know, it's, it's good for uh, keeping up, you know, but in reality, it's really hard uh, to wind something like that compared to the, the, um, the method that I, I use in my guide. And that's something that Daniel Nunez uh, emphasized is, you know, they tried everything. They tried even this method and they found that the easiest method to do this is just to put it on the um, sliding disc frame and just you know use zip ties and tie it up like that because it's very it, this takes a long trust me i tried it on my smaller one and you have to you know like go through and, and glue it step by step and make sure everything you know is is straight That's along the way symmetric. yeah and keep and make sure the wires don't get bent while you put them back through the it, it's it's a process you know, and there's some tips and tricks you can learn, but you'll definitely want to get some extra wire if you try one of these because, you know, like I messed up a couple of them before I got it right. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, we are almost at three hours now. A full right hour past what we want. Oh. That's what you need. Is uh, everything you do open source? Uh, yes. Yes. You the, can get the guide right on my channel. The voltage yeah. goes through right here on this side. Uh -huh. it, it just passes straight through. This adds your. You can just hook your phone right to it. It'll add the frequency to it. Ah, oh, okay. Like I said, it's really cheap. You could do it anytime you want. And what's I it use called this again? One here, my high voltage, to add a duty cycle and a frequency to it, so I can change the output of my high voltage coils. So that's a different one, but this is the one you want right here. It's real cheap. You can get a bag of them for like ten bucks at Amazon. Said the voltage goes straight through here, out the other side, and then your frequency goes in here. And it's five volts, so you can use your phone. No, that's that's good. I'll 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 look into that definitely, and I'll I'll definitely need help uh constructing some kind of circuit 
for the next phase of testing. So uh, uh, I'll look, I look forward to communicating with you guys via email and uh, updating you next week. Right on. Awesome. awesome. All right. So we got Tim. Tim, you still with us? Do you want to, if you're here, share your album? Of APAC Adventure? No. Did we lose Tim? Tim the Body Ventura. No. Right. <laughs> Smackdown. What Joe Man Randy said. My, my, my is is the from the WWF. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Oh, good. Anyone, I guess, any other last words while we're waiting for Tim to get back? Oh, I just wanted to, uh, I, I put, um, I put a, just, uh, uh, a little comment in the private chat, but if you wanted access to the Rodent Coil Guide, it's all open sourced on my channel. If you go to uh, the video that I uploaded, I think it's the second last one called Zero Point Energy Solved. Uh, in the description, there is the link to the guide on my Google Drive. So you'll have access to all that, and it it's a work in progress. As is so, all um, real science. Yeah. So, but it will be updated. So if you you know check back periodically, but I do emphasize try to you know copy it and and paste it somewhere. Uh, you know, just in case you know back it up for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, you try friend. pulsing no, that quail with a done. double pull, double throw. Uh, you you're a friend of Ken Wheeler. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I did. I actually have a video on Ken Wheeler. I love his work in magnetism, but I do yeah. a strong criticism of him uh, on uh, his economics. It's it's terrible. So if you go to uh, my channel and, and view uh, how capitalism suppresses free energy, that video delves into that. Oh, okay. yeah. Actually, the United yeah. States has had a loss since 1951 <clears throat> suppressing free energy because of the oil for uh, dollar type situation that they had. Going yeah, the petrodollar. <laughs> yeah, yep. it's all interconnected. It's pretty amazing, yep. actually. Yeah. Yep. Why they killed Stanley Myers. <laughs> Those bastards. All right. Well... Until Tim gets back, or if Tim doesn't get back, we can end it with this. But in lieu of Stanley Myers and trying to resurrect that technology, we need... Uh, oh, come on. Where is it? Oh, my God. Did it... It closed? You lost what your cue, Bernie. <laughs> Lost it. All right. All right. Well, I don't know. Now it's freezing. Doesn't want me to share the the hydrogen video. <laughs> Happens every time. Literally every time I share this hydrogen. I got a video on the car video. It freezes. On the pole flip demonstration of a coil. Hey, Tim's back. Yeah. Hey, I was gonna ask Nathan, have hey. you um have you tried experimenting with your mid plate? On the Graviflyer, Jared and I have been talking about that a lot. Different mid plate experiments to try. Like which one? Like for what? What kind of experiment? That, that center plate. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't like. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of guesstimating. But like, so he was talking about counter rotating eddy currents, right? And right. And so then that brought me to this idea of torsion shear, which is something I've heard before. And if it's some kind of a torsion shear effect. Like we talked about a bunch of different potential experiments, like maybe um, the, the idea, I think, was he was talking about counter rotating eddy currents in, in skin effect layers. And you got a really thin plate there. So so you, basically you would have these eddy currents that are like just like a millimeter or less apart going in different directions in this plate. And maybe that's what's causing the lift if it's some kind of a torsion effect. So if that's the case, one of the things that, that I'd wondered about was maybe like, what if you could improve the conductivity of it by trying copper, copper mid plate, or, or maybe try a, like, one of the things I, I wondered was maybe putting copper tape over it. And, and basically you would have a junction between the aluminum and the copper and you could get those currents even closer together and try and isolate them more. Um, I mean, 
you know, that I don't know. And, and then some of the other stuff we talked about was, uh, let me see, he is, so he's going to coat, I think, his screws on the bottom of the, the rotor so that they can bump the voltage up a little bit higher. And then he's trying magnets on the top rotor as well as the bottom. I, I tried both, the top and bottom. Yeah. I've used nylon bolts. Uh, and I could tell you right now, you don't need to bump that energy up. And the actual eddy current works against you because you're taking it out of the right octave in the center plate. As soon as you add the magnets on top, that's why uh, Alexi couldn't do it. It's the eddy current that actually couples the capacitor between the bottom plate and top plate. As Jared always tells you, that you feel the eddy current in it, right? Yeah. But what he's not putting together is it's creating the capacitor, making your center plate able to grab a volume of energy to build up both energies on the top and bottom plate. So I don't think he's had the plate where you've had the voltage on the top plate it'll expand by double no matter what you do if you can bring up your volume of energy in your center plate okay okay and, and he, yeah I, I don't know that he spiked it the way i did i've gotten that thing to double and hit a second resonance state in this thing and just amplify like crazy and yeah it, the only problem i had was i bent my high voltage thing going in so it sparked over and it was taken away from my energy every time it did. So I corrected that, and the thing just, it was lighting up with Good energy. observation. So, did, did, so you didn't see any lift effects from it, right? No, not yet. Mm. Uh, uh, let me see. Have you tried Have you tried balance beam? You probably have, right? Oh, you're talking about the where he has it on the uh, level? Yeah, yeah, well, that was that was yeah, that was my. Have you idea. tried was, weighing it at all? Maybe putting it on a scale. Maybe it is getting something. You just can't that, notice. That was it? why. Yeah. So we what we tried was, uh, he had that he had that balance beam that was like I don't know ten bucks from Home Depot or something, and so what we did was we 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 created a balance. We just put string in the center of it, and then he used uh, he put the gravity flyer on one side and he used a bucket full of water on the other and he was pouring water in to match the weight. Right. So and 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 uh, so he he felt like I mean, it, it does have a fair amount of vibration, but he felt like it was actually creating a little bit of lift every now and then. So so, oh, I, so maybe it was like pulsing. Yeah, he's yeah. Using the flutter. That's what he's looking for. He's looking for a flutter on his dish. So, and, and so it's creating a little bit of a light. Fascinating. That's it really might be cool. it might be interesting to try and do a, a balance beam, Nathan. You might be getting mm -hmm. some thrust with it that you're just not seeing yeah yeah i, I think honestly like i'm it, hitting more it, of an energy level with it on the ground because of the way the tesla coil is so when i'm done with that and if it doesn't work then i'll do the down balance beam as well yeah well and that was something he didn't try he's got his suspended in the air uh i, I guess he, he was saying he used to do it on the ground but he's got it suspended in the air now so yeah. It has to do with the charge level. You got, if if you think of gravity like snow, right? And snow comes down. If you want to break that snow, you got to resonate this thing. So you got to vibrate it pretty hard, right? And the more you do it, the less the snow can stick on it. So it's the same way as gravitational waves. If you can break that with resonance, you're going to make it feel lighter to the environment. It will not change the weight at all it'll just change the way the gravity affects it. And if you can do that, then you're good. That's why hitting the right octave with the right resonance and the vibration will actually break it free from gravity. It's why bridges go torqued out of condition when you do that, when too many people go over it and you keep the constant signal going with their footsteps or horses Absolutely. on a bridge. Everything Absolutely. like that disrupts the gravitational wave. That's exactly what you got to hit here, but you got to hit it dead on. And that, that's why I say the application of energy, because I can't measure it in my oscilloscope. I break it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I have to see it another way. And the only way Alexi sees it was when that energy picks up when it's ready to lift off. So right. I hit see, that state. Yeah, we had, of, we had a lot of EMPs when, when I was over there. Well, that, you should see was... the ones that go off in my garage. Yeah. 
Um, now, some of those, uh, there might be a way to isolate some of those. Some of those that look like basically you had high voltage that was dumping into the ground. And we, when I was working with lifters, we had that problem too. The problem is when your HV goes into the ground, it comes back up into your circuit through the ground. Well, well that's okay. Imagine that effect and sucking in the ground, right? Yeah. If you can take all of that energy that goes to the ground and flip it in an instant, that's your lift. You have to take it's you keep everybody keeps saying you can't get the energy from the ground. But if you're taking the ton of it and you're creating that charge just like your lifter does to the ground, where it sucks real hard to the ground, and then you get a pole flip. So you're changing the charge mm -hmm. automatically from one to the next. It bumps and you raise. Stubble okay. fear, stubble field, uh the uh Tesla's uh apprentice or, or um uh, predecessor, I guess. Uh, he had a battery that you just, it was called the earth battery. You just plug it into the ground. No input. That And that pulled from the ionosphere, right? That was the ionosphere. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, I have it in the practical guide to free energy devices. I just haven't gone over it yet. Yeah, I, I think it. that would be different than what we're looking at here i know what you're talking you know what if you're interested in that stubble field thing um hmm. oh god where is it there i saw a video online you can actually build one with leds they're low enough power really? that you yeah it, it's uh god where did i see this this was like probably a couple of years ago they used a six foot led pole and and it, it they used a six foot pole and it had an led in it and there was like a little resistor or something there, there was a easy circuit you it plug it into the ground and the potential difference is high enough mm -hmm. it'll actually light up the led and you can use it as night lights that would be interesting to hook up in in uh with the rodent coil to see if it amplifies it at all too i i built a rodent coil i never saw anything but could be how did you have it hooked up and and how did you wind it oh it was a long time ago i was running ac through it um i just used the standard rodent winding but did you bundle your wires or did you use a uh, loose wind method where you just loosely wind them on top of each other? Uh, loose wound. Okay. So that is a common mistake with the rodent coil. What you want to do is actually um, take an electric screwdriver and this is uh, covered in the guide. Um, you take electric screwdriver and when you, you know, based on the number of winds you want, you tight, you tighten it real tight. And then you uh, use the electric screwdriver to bundle the wires. So they're as, tight and evenly um together well, i mean as mine, mine were tight for hand wound but but uh so the, what kind of effects are you seeing from it so uh apparently when um the difference is i guess uh what you're doing is when you're leaving space uh for the wires you're not compressing the magnetic fields and, and amplifying their effect right they're just loosely or or not e so they need to be twisted and tightly packed together so the effects amplify and compact on, on, on each other. So what you're doing is creating, you know, like one magnetic field with one, a one wind and another one with another wind and another one, you know, and they're all compacting and compressing on one another. And, and when they're tightly compact like that, um, I believe that you kind of pinch off one of the poles at a specific frequency range, you know, when you tune it in and using the geometry. And uh, in my opinion, you pinch off the inflow to the aether, you know, because magnets are nature's over unity devices. They, in my opinion, they take in uh, from one pressure differential to the the other, the North Pole to the South Pole. And if you look at my video, um, you know, magnets can best be described by fluid dynamics. You know, why do opposites attract? It's the, the, uh, the current of the aether flowing around them. You know, if you take two spheres and spin them in a, a pool of water, spin them in the same direction they're not gonna spin the same current in the same direction so yeah so so what yeah. you're what you're kind of talking about this goes to the same idea of the torsion shear effect right so, similar, yes so but what, what kind of effects do you see when you do the coil so in the low end you can produce a strong electromagnetic field um with very low power input and at the higher end, and I believe there's maybe like a harmonic where you can even go one higher like megahertz range and have a, a, a you know, other, you know, like a, another effect up there in that range. But in the higher end, you see it over unity. And in my coil, it seems to have a one to two ratio in voltage while at least maintaining the current. Mm. So that means you'll have like 3.5 on the input on volts, and then you'll have like seven on the output. Interesting. 
Interesting. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. And uh, there's a common a couple of common mistakes that people do with the the, the rodent coil wind. And I believe if, uh, you know, we can just correct those mistakes, people can actually replicate this. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what, what you were talking about with the, the vortex flows, that was, I, I was looking at something kind of similar with the Graviflyer, you know. And that, that's, yeah. that's kind of a different, it's kind of a different approach than Nathan is using conceptually. But uh, right. I, it doesn't it doesn't mean I'm right. I'm just kind of guessing. Yeah, we're all just well, kind of like shooting in the dark here, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's the, that's the problem, right? I mean, that's the problem. See, we're all, but maybe yeah, that's, this is the most... If, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Well, well, maybe that's good, though. I mean, you got like a bunch of different people who are approaching the same problems with a ton of different directions. Maybe exactly. that's good because everybody's trying different stuff, you know? Yeah, no, that that is. And we're mm -hmm. all out of the box thinkers. And that's important. But that I wanted to, to say just real quick that that last coil that we saw, that was the advanced 432 uh, 3.0 uh coil the last version the most advanced version that the first stop energies um daniel nunez uh pr produced and supposedly that design will eliminate the ozone problem that the coil has at higher voltage that's the coil there that's beautiful yeah they Ooh, really had some that. beautiful coils they spent 10 11 years their their family making these <laughs> coils putting a lot of love and a lot of you know um, labor. I, into I was in talks with them. They came on to a awesome live stream with uh, me and alien scientist one time. And then really? all of a sudden, just like I, I was planning a full episode with them. It was supposed to happen in like a week's time. And like, then all of a sudden, just every video on their channel disappeared. And disappeared. I never heard from them since. When was that? Like around 2022? Uh, it was 2000. Yeah. 2022, two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Why sometimes people get they get crank troll comments and it freaks them out that uh, that UAP theory guy, Thor, he did that. He was just like he, he I guess he got some troll comments and it just made him nervous. And he's like, I just don't want to have it online anymore. He took everything down. And, <clears throat> yeah. You know, so, yeah. And there's uh, and honestly, the the Occam's razor tells me the simplest a uh, thing that happened to them is they got sued or they got entangled in some kind of legal situation and got a gag order put on them. They just had to take their shit down off of YouTube or something. Could be. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Yeah. It's, it's a shame. It's a shame. You know, it might've been their growing vegetables in the dark and the vegetables grew to the coils that got them maybe classed as national yeah. security and everything. The agriculture, yeah, that the agriculture a industry one. is a, a mafia, dude. Or maybe maybe well, they weren't so growing vegetables. Maybe industry. they're growing something else. You know, <laughs> it's not just the food industry. It's the medical industry. It's the the energy industry. They're all just separate mafias. Right. But yeah. but the cat's out of the bag now. So it's up to them and their industries to adapt and change or die. You know, that the cat's out of the bag. They can't put it back in the bag now. There's too many people on this. There's too many eyes. And it's, you know, we got the thunderstorm generator being uh, demoed off this weekend in, in a, uh, you know, what is it, North Carolina? Could be. I've... Yeah, forgive me. Yeah, for the, not... the, cosmic, the Cosmic Summit, I believe, is in North Carolina. It's being demoed this weekend. You know, like there's too many, there's too many people onto this now. You know, Joe you know Rogan what? and and uh, a couple of other major celebrity uh, podcasters have have already talked about this and had Randall Carlson on talking about Malcolm Bendel and and his new technology. And that's kind of like the stepping stone into the next industrial revolution where we kind of can introduce these new energy saving devices without disrupting you know, the status quo. You know, have these industries adapt and change or die. It's just that well, simple. <laughs> Forgive me for not being too optimistic. I was around in the 2008 uh, kind of rush into YouTube with all the different free energy and Padini and Thomas Bearden, which I got to ask them both a question. And there was a lot of people working on free energy at that point. And there were a lot of different devices that looked very promising. And then nothing. It just all ended. Well, so, there, yeah, and there's yeah, it seems to be an unfortunate not... pattern, but I mean, the, I think the major mistake again is these people didn't open source their stuff. 
They didn't yeah. have backups. They didn't have apprentices. I agree. Uh, I'm going to have to. I had somebody building a coil right what now. What I saw happen was several of them be that were all open sourcing and they were developing to the point where it was like, okay, this is clearly undeniable now we've seen that this like actually is at the point and now crossed over and is working and then boom all of their channels just disappeared the ones that actually had them all of them disappeared and then what happened next was the same models of those suddenly the a few of these bigger uh debunking free energy channels all produced an influx of them came up yeah of each did, of yeah. Them. did let me ask you something did all their did they was it just youtube or, or did they have backup channels on like rumble on and YouTube. stuff i don't think rumble was around then no right? it was right rumble so around. what i'm what i think and and this is a good practice in general is just to have a backup channel on rumble on uh you know different various uh platforms just to back up your stuff as uh, many different platforms as possible because um you know like it's not it's not like these uh if somebody is doing this uh, maliciously it's not like they have universal access they probably have to go through channels to get through one platform to the next so well, it's not i don't think they can just shut down everything all at once the united states has these laws are- preventing free energy from being released Anything right but you have to understand these platforms are intellectual property themselves oh, no, right? I understand these, completely yeah. but those these platforms aren't exactly free entirely no yeah, no they're, not, they're, been they're not they're not they're, exactly guys, free. There, and that's, there have been a lot of scams there have been a lot of scams oh well, there's I, definitely that's, been a ridiculous that's kind of why of that's kind of why i built my forum you know like that's, that's um, it's, it's it's actually hosted and and uh admin by me I upload videos on there. You know, if, if Wix wants to shut me down, then I'll just move to another platform. But uh, if if everybody, you know, just has the mentality of trying to use multiple Don't get me wrong. Backups. I'm right there with you. I want everybody to try this. I want everybody to build one. I want the whole world to have this for free. And if these platforms are the way to do it, then by all means, let's do it. It might not um, be, though. It Well, no, that's what I'm saying. It might not be. We might have to build our own platform. And I'm not sure how to do that yet. But, you know, like, uh, I guess the forum on my page is kind of like a starting point. But still, it's not foolproof. But I think we do have to build our own platform. You know, screw these uh, uh, bigger companies. We can do it ourselves. Networking. Uh, grassroots. It's called APEC. And. And uh, here is the platform. Uh, it oh, you have something. And everybody needs to uh, come to it. Hey, uh, everybody. Tim Ventura here. And I'm going to urge you to visit altpropulsion.com and register for APEC, the Alt Propulsion Conference. Over the last two years, we featured over 100 of the top PhD physicists, engineers, and innovators in breakthrough and emerging propulsion. And we're looking to grow the conference this year even more. APEC is a Zoom-based online conference event. It's always free and open to everyone. We've been featured in Popular Mechanics, The Debrief, and a number of other media publications. This year, we're going to take things to the next level. With- All right, right that, so that APEC. Me. APEC is the platform, and there's the APEC uh, Discord and Telegram, and what else is there, too? Because like that's where everyone's collecting, right? Yeah, th- so those headphones I use, I know when I recorded that, because I those... I bought those headphones uh, right at the same time that I bought the the mic, and then somebody said, "Tim, quit using the headphones. Use the earpods." So I I switched to earpods. So, so I'm. Yeah, That's why are. you don't have the sound like Mikey does. Just kidding. Right. Well, that this the room I recorded. I'm on a Bluetooth room. headphone set. Yeah. This room. Yeah, echoes. now you're good. Now you're good. So I'm it's very short range in here, but. Yeah, a, so APAC is on you. We we broadcast on YouTube, but that's the conference. So it's the platform is YouTube, right? It's just the APAC thing. Well, I yeah, I get APAC needs an app, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Do, do you guys? Did you see my? Can can I show you my photos? Yes, please do, and we'll okay. probably end it off with that because we get. Well, yeah, I'm gonna be doing some video editing tonight too, so. Okay, here. Uh, let me. I'll, I'll share that. Let me share this real quick. Oops. I'll be quick. So I have been. If you guys can see this, 
Is that is that working? No. Oh, okay. There we go. I have been crisscrossing the country to uh, to take photos. Um, these are all new. Everything from Asilomar. So I went to Jared Yates. Um, I've got videos of this on the Alt Propulsion channel also. And then these are all video. These are all photos that I took at that time. And so this is Jared's grab a flyer. And let me see. Go on, let me go back up here. So the, the most recent one that I went to was I just got back from the SCU conference, right? And that's the UAP one. That was in Huntsville, which was not the easiest flight. Um, and so there's Matthew Sadagas. There is uh, Kevin Newth, you know, uh, Gary Voorhees. I didn't label all of these, but I labeled enough so that you'd know who's who. And what I'm trying to do is basically just open this up and, and get higher quality photos out there. And so I'm trying to take advantage of all of these different events. There's Isaiah Ritchie, because Isaiah lives kind of near Jared. So when I went to visit Jared, um, we went over to Isaiah's place. And so that's his SEG. So I got photos and video of that, and I've got those up in the Alt Propulsion channel. And so the the idea was, again, it's like I wanted, well, you guys know, right? It's It's like we deal with so many crummy photos and bad video online that, you know, it, after a while, it's just like, okay, Somebody needs As to put up high this stuff. def, undeniable, yeah. non AI documented uh, work possible. Because actually. all the people working on these things, you know, they're not, you know, or a lot of them, they're not classically trained to believe. <laughs> they're not classically trained to, to you believe. You need to draw like, out your diagrams possible. more often. Well, it's just, I, I mean, every I, time I, you change something, you should draw it out. I get or, it. You know, it's just these folks don't they're busy working on stuff and so they don't invest the time and I, I i get that but like my my hope was like maybe i can help just open this up right i mean right and, and then part of it like uh with the the alt propulsion channel um and you've probably seen that the alt propulsion youtube channel um i did I, again i spent a couple of days at jared's place and we i just tried to film everything you know because like like if Jared or Nathan explains what they're doing with the Grava flyer, and he was using Jared was using a lot of your videos, Nathan. He he like he, <laughs> was he, he really? Was, yeah, he was he he was like, yeah, look at this, look at this, look at this. Yeah. So, <laughs> like, the thing is, the work that you do, like other people use that to build off of, and so then it's like, man, if I can help share that, that's really cool, you know exactly so. exactly we're all here building off of each other's work to help each other paint a bigger picture yeah right? so <laughs> you're it's literally... a lot easier to do with diagrams so next <laughs> next week i'm going to drew uh arigma i'm going down to florida and i'm going to meet with nice. drew and and i'm going to try again i'm going to try and just get a little bit more and try and present it a little bit better and then after that i'm going up to mark sokol's lab in new jersey and and just awesome. try and get what, what i can do there so yeah that's cool yeah i mean there, there's no yeah i unfortunately and then I you got to go to hutchinson's again uh he is down he oh where is he at he is down it's north of san francisco it's like an hour hour and a half north of san francisco it's like an air, airport dead spot like you literally have to drive for like two hours no matter where you fly into <laughs> i would love to do an interview with him he is so cool yeah i don't think he's at i I don't think he's actively doing work right now. Yeah, he he just wants to be left alone. I sh I'm sure. Some of this is old. Uh, the, uh, like that was 2005, right? So. And why hasn't from... it progressed in 20 years? You know what? I think EVs kind of just waste a lot of this stuff. But... Yeah, that was like a total cop out. You know, like this was kind of moving forward and picking up steam. I think that, I think, and and th these guys are still around. I mean, you know, and some of it, like those, I don't know. The, yeah, the Hutchison effect, those are good photos. Oh, yeah. Look at um, that. You document oh, scientific yeah. history evidence right here. With Yeah, those are some photos. wild photos. Where did you get these photos? Uh, I, I shot those at Hutchison's place in like 2005, wow. 2006. Um, it just yeah. literally like melts apart. 
Yeah, and so one of the things I noticed going through the videos also mm -hmm. was not all the time, but most of the time when it starts to melt like jelly like that, it mm -hmm. starts in the center. So it's almost like that's where the wavelength reinforces. Right, where it propagates. Yeah, so like it starts in the, it'll have like a big bar and it'll start to pull apart in the center of the bar. Yeah, and no, I seen that in the videos. Yeah, like in strands See, and almost. That, that one too, right? That's one bar, and, and it started in the center. So it's not supposed to be yeah. hot. Is that is that true? Is or am I mis misremembering? Yeah, no. I mean, there's one. So there's one where there's a Canadian penny. If uh, like if you scroll Apple up, well, it's, it's way up there. There's a piece of aluminum with wood in it, and it's honest to God, like oh, it's right there. It's right oh, there. Oh, I seen that. I yeah, I seen that. That was yeah. That is awful. that's that's from fingernail. So, that's from my. So fingernail. what is he doing? He's taking ultra high frequencies and and different tones and multiple tones. I, I mean, I, I like I have kind of a pet theory about what might be going and, on, but I'm not sure. Um, well, and him and Nancy and APEC, when asking them specifically, it was very similar actually to what Nathan's talking about with the pop and that like he's listening and gets the, these, uh, Nancy described them before John as like pop moments or something uh, when he was in the zone or like the right frequency range to do it or something like that. What what? So what I could tell you is, you know, any metal, right? You've got these little crystal domains in it. Those are visibly disrupted in these samples, and you can kind of see that on camera. But when you hold them up close, you can see that the crystal domains in that aluminum are seriously messed up. I mean, it, yeah, it's crystals are like are switches. They're they're all facing the same direction. So if you I, polarize what I, any of them the other direction, it's going to fracture the whole thing. What what I what I think maybe going on is okay in in any chemical right like like a metal or anything else valence electrons hold it together right so those all have different frequencies but like in a especially in a big sample like aluminum right you're going to have similar frequencies what if you could disrupt i don't know how many it would take what if you could disrupt the orbitals for some of those valence electrons you'd change the chemistry right but only when the the field was on and so Maybe that's what makes it flow like a liquid is he's hitting hmm. those valence electrons with, you know, and, and then the minute you turn the field off, they kind of go back to normal and there's no evidence that it ever did that. So you, you get like melting hmm. at room temperature. That's I mean, interesting. Isn't he putting in two like, different frequencies, like one box. vertical one? Yeah. Oh, that's that, what I uh, thought. I thought he had two different inputs. He he had lots of so he had high voltage DC. Some more, more. Um, he had so the he had a band generator graph, with a Tesla coil. Antenna. Sometimes multiple Tesla coils. He had a lot of, <laughs> he had a lot of stuff going on. Um, he also had some old Navy equipment that he played with. And right. from what I understand, he, he, would, Marine. he would use different stuff at different times. The kind of stuff you really got to have courage to mess around with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he was definitely and, and a you've legend. got to be real safe with it and know what you're doing. You know, oh, he was His neighbors hated him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the, I'm sure he caused all sorts of brownouts all the time. <laughs> yeah. The um that one is br so there's brass. Uh, there, there's aluminum bar, right? And then there's brass. The brass is kind of the yellow one. Um. In, there's no evidence of heating or, or tool work on any of them. But look at the brass; it's like bubbly, almost like it's it's in it's spherical patterns. Yeah, and then above that there was iron, and with the iron that was actually hardened, uh, or what was it like? This it was from an axe. Kind of bismuthy, so, like crystal formation, but it's brass. I get it. That, I mean, that's, he was pumping so that, up the that's amps. The iron, that's clean the, signal. That's, iron. that's part that's of an iron. axle, right above that's it. Iron. Right above it is part of an axle, oh, and. Yeah. To me, that almost looks like erosion. I'm not sure if that's Hutchison effect. That to me, that looked, that kind of looked like erosion. Uh, right mm. to the left of that, that's aluminum, and that's I was trying to get a close up of the crystal domains. Right, and you can kind of see. I mean, yeah. that's that's a bar almost of aluminum. chalky, salty kind of. Yeah, bar. something just trashed it. To, I mean, compared to this, it almost looks like wood or like frozen clay or something, right? Like. 
Yeah, but I mean, I, I've held those, and it's just, it feels, it's it's aluminum. It's So whatever happened to it, like, and then that's a, a steel table knife that's embedded in a block of aluminum, and that happened at room temperature, and then they put it in a, a I don't know, some kind of a vice grinder to cut through it so you could see it, but um, it, it went right in. So, and you can see there's no no evidence of heating or anything like that. Yeah, you would see it if it was melted. You would yeah. see it. Yeah, it it looks, looks like it's just fused together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you can get your signal up with enough amps behind it without any distortion and a nice clean signal, and whatever material that signal passes through is going to try to shape itself to the shape of that signal, assuming you've got enough amps behind that signal. He wasn't using amps, though. Uh... He was using all kinds yeah, of... Yeah, he had some high-powered uh, frequency oh, yeah, generators. No. Are you kidding yeah, me? John, John, yeah, John... High power. He yeah. was very courageous. No, Mike, Mike's right. John did some crazy shit. I know what he was I saw his equipment. I was following him. Right, when like he sonars, came out. radars, all yeah. sorts of crazy... Like, literally, he was stripping... He had old-school Navy equipment. Right that stuff's high-amp, Gerald. Yeah. I, I know he had a Chrystron at one point. <laughs> But but that being said, most of these effects, most of these effects, I think were vacuum tubes, Tesla coil amps. created. I I think uh, Mike, I think he added most of that stuff later, and I don't think that created most of these effects. I think most of this is like multiple Tesla coils and Van de Graaffs. But then the the other thing that you got to keep in mind is he works in, or he worked in a really like it was a tight space lab and there were lots of resonance effects right from tables and racks and shit like that so hey tim was jared getting cold heat on the center plate so the plate would be cold and then it would have tremendous heat where you burn your hand i don't think so i don't think so i get that in mind yeah, It'll be and you were saying that the cold's on the inside, Nathan, and the heat's on the outside. Nathan, yeah, you correct. sure it's not a cold, a cold burn? Because you can be burned by extreme cold as well. well it, it, all I know is my finger was absolutely Liquid burned nitrogen, in seconds. Man. Do you think that might be from the voltage, though? There's nope. nitrogen in the air. Maybe the plate the was rubbing onto nitrogen. It, it didn't happen until you hit a special resonance state. You, yeah, you the, don't, you don't get it right away. If, if yeah, I, Nathan, if you can like run the take some videos of specifically that uh, phenomenon would be awesome. Because yeah, I'll burn my finger for science for you. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, I will. I'll, I'll do it. I mean, piece, the, the air is twenty percent nitrogen. If if I get to go back to to Hutchison's, if if I get the opportunity to go back there, um, I I will try and get some more photos. I think he still has most of these samples. I, I think it has to do with the vertical waves and the horizontal waves, and their combination when they hit in the center. Because I'm getting that in the gravity flyer with the piezo disc coming down, and then the rest of it coming across the center plate. You might you might talk about that with Jared and see. I mean, one of the things that I, like just just by visiting there and throwing ideas out, like it had some inspiration. And you guys are both builders, so maybe you cross inspire yeah. each other. Just have like a tuning session or something on Zoom and see what you can come up with. Brainstorm, but that was yeah. skip, skip, skip the, st skeptical of Hutchinson at the beginning. But when I think about it twice, uh, I got in hypothesis. You remember the. The atomic forces I showed, it's, I said that it's easy to change the parameters. So maybe that's what he's doing. He changed the, the, wave guide. the atomic cohesion and, of the atom. And Hutchinson atoms. has been suppressed relentlessly. I kind of also suspect, as Bob Greenier is pointing out with ball lightning, the EVO, that uh, there's yeah. some sort of plasma field. Is it's the wave it's the well, wave you know, Bernie, it's... Bernie, it's interesting that you mentioned that. So the EVO thing goes back to Ken Shoulders. That's who originated it. And Ken and John were like close friends for years. They used to email each other. And and John and both of them felt that too. They they both really felt that EVOs played a role. They they used to talk all the time, man. 
I know, uh, speaking from personal experience, when I first seen the Hutchinson effect and researched it the first time, I thought it was phony because the video I was watching debunking it was actually put out after his videos and it was just one of his videos and they edited it a line into the, or they replicated it in some way to make it look fake. And there, there and, was one that people got really pissed off about. He told me when he was going to do it. I never so, saw that. Uh, th so the, th okay. The thing to know about John was um, number one, he changed his equipment several times. It, like he would have equipment break or whatever, or sell it or whatever. The, the other part was he quit for several years because because he was doing it all in an apartment and his apartment landlord just said, John, people are complaining, right? Yeah, yeah. So so he got hey, back into it. He had, amps. <laughs> he had TV crews come through and one of them said, what about this lifter thing? And I was doing lifters at the time. And John said, I'll do a lifter. And he put a toy UFO on a string and it was a wire. The, and, and he just put a high voltage on it. You could see it move a little bit with the high voltage. And that got on the internet and people said, oh, look, it's fake. You can see a string. Well, the thing is. And that's the video. Yep. Okay. That was the, that was, that basically it was a TV studio that said, build a lifter for us. And then it, it got misinterpreted, I guess. But oh, that, so it was actually uh, authentic footage, but it was interpreted or misrepresented. Right? Yeah, he was he was just playing around, and he didn't even have his classic Cutchess and Effect stuff at the time because right he, he called me. I I talked to him like the day before or the day after he did that. He described the whole but, thing. But that video has been used to debunk him for years, and when you look at it a second time, you're like, wait a second, how the f is he yeah. doing all this other stuff? <laughs> No, it was totally different. It was totally different. He didn't even have the original equipment, and he wasn't turning on the stuff that he did. But part of it was you in can't that time, find any of his original videos anymore. I mean, when he first came out, he you could started see him. Uh, uh, back up on his channel. I have them. No, I have. Yeah, them on all. his website, there's a lot of. Tim I mean, has them all. There we go. Uh, social media, anyway. Uh, I they should be up on Alt Propulsion. That used to be the American Anti Gravity site. There should be. His original, so okay. The original footage they did was Super 8 footage. Like, find the one with the bowling ball, like right now. You, you won't find it that easy. Uh, Tim's got it on VHS somewhere in the <laughs> box, I guarantee. I see now it was, was it a bowling ball? It was a steel ball or something, a cannonball from a cannon. Yeah, it was yeah, freaking huge. It yeah, was there huge. we go. Here we go. I'll, I'll put it right in the chat. Can you play it? Can you share a screen? Play it. I tried looking for that one. Um, yeah, I it's it's on. Yeah, this is everything. And then I he has a lot of stuff on his website too, but you have to pay like I think it's like thirty four dollars, and you get access to like the a whole big archive. I mean, some oh, of it's not know. science stuff, but yeah. Oh, I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about that. I. It's like Hutchinson, John Hutchinson, or Hutchinson.com, something like that. I forget the the domain, but I can look it up real quick. Yeah, I seen all the when he first came out on YouTube. I saw the one with the bowling ball. Yeah, I that mean, was if, like, you, if you want, I'm sorry, the the cannonball. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to load it. My computer's being slow and crappy. The cannonball he had lifting for quite a while. I can here if you want. I can. I can. Bernie, do you want me to play it? Yes, please. Okay. And two, 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 two. I think that's right about the time that they started censoring. Them. I put a soundtrack that. over this because it was kind of cool and creepy at the time, and I kind of regret it now. See, that was my. Okay, I'll I put the link in there if anybody's yeah, interested. Yeah, yeah. I, a -A -G. I have the law. Yeah, because that was. I, I have the raw video in here too, but. Um, yeah, they what they did was they took the Super 8 and they cleaned it up because that was film footage. George Hathaway shot this. So part of it is like if if you want to know. So this this is some of it. This was like highlights from the Hutchison effect. And this was uh, t I think this was 1080. It's crazy. A plastic so this, bottle. Look, yeah, there's the, the cannonball. There's the yeah. Right, first the wrench, then the. That cannonball weighs about twenty pounds. 
And okay. how the wrench went first, or the vice I, grips. Is that, is that a bucket? That's, that's a, yeah, a five-gallon bucket on the floor there? That's yeah. a file, just so you know. That thing that's glowing and sparking is a file. It's like a steel file. But it wasn't hooked up to anything. It was just doing that spontaneously. Did he ever make anything disappear completely? He had said, uh, the, the short answer is yes. I think he had that happen once or twice. He also said once it happened and there was some kind of a big glow. There was like, he also had some weird just. So weird... I have something <laughs> to say about that. On his website, if you look uh, on his website, his official website, it says that the pants. military says that the military looked at his videos, the Canadian military or whatever. And they said to him, do you realize that uh, in a couple of your videos for like a frame or two, things are disappearing? I couldn't see them, but hmm. that's what it says on his website. And let me see if, is this the one? No. What, what one's this? Yeah, this is the original. Okay. So um, this one is, uh, here, I, I'll drop that playlist. What is that? And look at uh, the that, field that is line. Wa so that's water. That's what it's a cup of water. And again, this was shot on Super 8. This is uh, this is when it was not cleaned okay. up. Yeah, it's it's so the the electro, it, the magnetic fields or whatever oh. are vibrating the water. So that's what that one is. And then and like wow. look at the field for okay, there is that's the wow. file. That's so that's just a steel file that's. Sorry, that's a steel file. You can see sparks coming off it. Um, I think he had that pinned between two pieces of wood or something, but it wasn't connected to anything. There's sparks coming off it. You can see those. He's like ionizing the air or something. Um, no, you could uh, you the, put sorry. a coil over it and energize the coil and heat up the iron. This was, okay, this was a, oh, hell, what was this? It, uh, uh, basically, it was like a steel wedge, I believe. Um, sorry. Here, I'll, I'll just zip through some of these. This was a steel wedge that never flew entirely. So one end of it lifted up. But the other end was too heavy. So it's kind of vibrating on the table. And then he had, he had, there's, that's another one. It's a, it's a steel wedge block of some kind. Same thing where it, it can't quite get off the table. So it's got a little bit of weight still. I uh, like these haunted houses with the, Chairs that are rocking on their own. It's there so we go. wild, like how it's it's almost like it's pulsating, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you guys, the the cannonball. He actually had a. There's a lot there. You could see. I mean, there's like that's like ten minutes of it. That's a five wild. gallon bucket on the right there. You see that? Uh, it's the table sitting on the bucket. Oh yeah, thanks, you, Mike. You know what? Give you what? an idea of how big that ball is of steel. That's probably thirty. Pounds, 40 pounds. Uh, he that's had the, ones are, the ones that are not made. That is a cup. I think that's a cup with like milk or milkshake or Elmer's glue or something like that. Yeah, it bubbled so up, it's a liquid. And shot up. There, I think you can see it again. Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is in just a sec, I'll drop this playlist link into chat for you guys and. Uh, I think that's so wild. there's more liquids. So there's there's that one, and then the other one. Uh, let me back out of this really quick, and I'll, I'll copy this playlist. Where is it? I think here it is. This okay. So this this is George Hathaway. George shot, if I understand this correctly, George shot a lot of this video. And so there's George describing some of the things, right? Like he's holding, he's like, okay, here's what it was. It's rocking back and forth or something like that. There's him. And then there was also at the same time, and this is eight minutes long. And again, this, this footage sucks, but there's John describing what went on. And this is like early 1980s. So that's why his face looks all distorted. I think this was VHS footage. Okay, here, let, let me stop. I'll stop sharing. Oh, 
Whoa. Here is... I would argue that footage was epic, even though it's low quality. Yeah, well, that's why I put it up. And the problem is that's all there is, right? So, you know. This footage it's... is some of the most legendary footage out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, John sent me the highest quality he had. And and then I took it, I think a lot of that I took off the If I had my uh, workstation... If I had my workstation up, I could try to upscale some of it, but my computer's down at the moment. Yeah, you could. The, no, I would have to go through my hard drive. I think a lot of that I saved in Windows Media Format because it was early 2000s, and I didn't realize. I mean, back then it was like, yeah, this will last forever. <laughs> but I yeah, have it's... so many boxes of DVDs I really, really regret. I'm on a Mac now. I can't even play Windows Media Format. It's, it's oh like, boy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I have to figure something out. But well, guys, this has been awesome. But I got to bail. I got yeah, work absolutely. Work, so. absolutely. Yeah, well, if, if you're interested well. in that, if you guys are interested in that that Hutchison stuff, I just dropped the playlist in there. You know, I mean, sure. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thanks, and I just Tim, shared it in the live chat for everyone. Uh, I don't have live chat. All I have is the private chat. No, no. On top, there's a button that you hit on the right, and it'll show you the comments. So. Oh, wait. Never mind. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right, everyone. You guys have yeah. a good night. I'll email. Right, we'll see you later. Nathan and ben have a good one, guys. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye. Absolutely. When's the next APEC there, Tim, before you leave? Oh. Tim's already gone. All right. Well, in that case, thank you everyone for being here. Subscribe to Benefactor, Old Man Builds, Mike Does, Phil Bouchard, um, Faraday Research, WPG and Light for Truth 2, myself, and we'll be back next week. Thank you all. A ta ta. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Have a good evening. <laughs> Yeah. It's just burning!